So to actually write a prolog program, we will have to do something like this. Let me just remove the example here. Okay, so the prolog requires two rules. So the first rule is the terminating rule. When the string is empty, it will match this. So basically, the rule has uh, three parameters. The first parameter is the input string. The last parameter is the output string. The, the center one is an accumulator. Okay, so given this uh, rule here, we're going to try to trace the execution of this rule here. Uh, let me just repeat. So these, uh, these are, there are two rules. The first rule is the terminating rule. The second rule is the rule that is uh, creating the recursion in order to actually make the, make the string reverse. The first part is input string. The middle parameter is an is a working as a working space. The last parameter is output. When the program terminates, the output will have the string that has been reversed. Um, so the second rule is the recursion rule, as I mentioned. So the recursion rule requires you to split the rule here. Split, sorry, split the list in the first parameter into a smaller list. So we divide them into a head and tail. So that when the recur when the recursion is called, it's called with a smaller list with the head removed. Okay, so the actual work is done in the in the center uh, parameter. So this the head of the input parameter is removed will be placed in front of the center parameters. So just like what we have done earlier, we we move. Um, the first item into the, the parameter here. So let me explain again. So the let's say this is the input list, right? This is uh, x slash t input list. Below the example is a, b, and c. So we remove the first item, the head item. Remove the first the head item. Re remove it and place it here. Then we remove another one and place it in front, right? So this corresponds to the uh, the body of this rule here, where the first item from this side is placed in front of the list. Okay, let me explain it again. Okay, so the first parameter x bar t here corresponds to a bar b c t below here. So um, we're gonna try to run the rule. So when we run the rule, what we do is to move this a here to this right side here, right? And there's a bar after the r. So each time, so this this and this bar will move in between here. Okay, so then the next round, the B will move in front. Okay, if you continue doing this, at the, the center parameter R, or the R here will have the um, reverse string. And when this uh, thing entirely terminates, the reverse string is copied to the final parameter. Okay, so. okay basically just now what I've explained was just the concept. Okay, let's now just trace the execution in more detail. So the input is this, okay? So we, actually the input is this with a variable, any variable, okay? So when you input this, the product program will convert the variable into a representation like this. So this is uh, the first thing that is converted in the program. So you have this, then the program will try to match Right, we'll try to match this input to any rule, to the rule, right? So first, it will try to match this, the head of this rule, which is the second rule here. I just repeated that. So you'll try to match this. In order to match this, it has, you have to 
try to prove it by matching the portion in yellow right in order to try to prove the uh, clause in yellow it will perform the um, moving operation so so you will try to prove this now so you're going to try to prove this this uh, clause here now so in um, So it's going to try to prove this clause now. In order to prove this clause, it have it has to try to prove the one in yellow. So it will go into a recursion. So it's trying to prove the one in in yellow. But in order to prove the one in yellow, it has it has to call another another round of the program. So it's going to do do that. So in order to prove this this, you have to call this program. And in order to so assuming that this head part is matching to this but in order to do that it has to try to prove the one in yellow again so it create a new version of the call so finally it reaches the end here okay it reaches the end here so when it reaches the end here it's not going to try to prove this rule now it will actually prove it will actually match this rule here so when it matches or unify then the, term, the recursion terminates. Okay, so when the recursion terminates, um, it will now try to move on and match the head now. Okay, okay, so it's matched this rule here. This yes, matched this rule now. Okay, so basically it would have matched uh, the portion in yellow earlier. If it has matched the port the, the rule in this yellow earlier now then you would have proven the one in the red which is the body of the clause so um, this is what happens okay when it when the recursion rewinds so this this part here is matched to the body and this body now returns the head so the head is this now this head now will match the body of the earlier call to obtain the new head and when this this goes on right so this goes on so so this body now match the head of the previous recursion call so therefore you get this and this body matches the head of the other recursion call so you get this so at the end of this recursion call, it stops, and you will find that the value of y matches CBA. So the y value can be retrieved through this cause. So when the recursion terminates entirely, the value of y would have the would have the uh, content of the reverse string. So in this case, it would be CBA. So that's the example here on how we can. Um, reverse a string using a prolong rule.